Moonshine is a book. The paintings, drawings, and doodles were born after dark, when shadows went over light, after long days on productions. This movie is a window through which you may tiptoe to see a hint of their private lives. Even the moon was not allowed a peek. You're taking this and you're literally opening it and you're squeezing it on the painting and you're moving the paint around, especially if you're going thick. So it, it's, a, you know, I love it. It's freeing and it's, it's completely a different way. I mean, how tiny they used to be, you know, in comparison. It's all watercolor gouache, basically, and um, down to the drip marks in it, you know, and you paint it this size outdoors, you have to embrace the fact that it's messy and it's going to run on you and you let it do its thing and then you kind of grab it and, and wrestle with it a little bit more and try to get it to where it is. There's nothing precious about it. What I like about ink is that you, it involves a lot of water and you don't control it a lot, so it's a mix between control and letting go and you know going back and forth between what you want to do and what the ink reveals and because most of the time it doesn't work as you as you expect it's a uh, ink made out of walnut they're pressed and it makes this sepia tone that you can use as a watercolor or any kind of other watercolor ink and the great thing about it is when, when it's dry you can put water back on it and it would erase somehow a little bit so you can rework with it I mostly paint for friends and families. Um, I start selling them more and more, but it's just that every time I paint, it's like it becomes my baby. I don't want to give them away. It's different if I give it to someone that I know because I know they're going to appreciate it and they're going to love it as much as I do. So I, you know, I keep borrowing them back. <laughs> this has traveled back to Indonesia, by the way, yes. And then for the Moonshine um, show, I asked my mom, Mom, can I please borrow those two paintings back? And then when she came back here, she brought it with her. And now it's still here. So this thing, the little book here and the couple of pens, I always carry. I carry to, to when I go to the DMV to register my car and I have to wait for half an hour, I'll do a sketch. So it's, so I, I never bored and I'm, I can always do something. I can always. Uh, find some downtime and, and work. I still do a lot of pencil and ballpoint pen sketches for myself, for work, for all the projects I do because for me it's the easiest way to compose and then I'll take it into the computer and do a lot of stuff in Photoshop. But I rarely start an image from scratch in Photoshop. It's a big problem. Many times I've drove home in the car and the, the paintings fall under the back seat. My wife's like, well, there's a big mess in the back of the car. What are you going to do? Are you are painting at the beach and a big wind blows and takes your oil paint and goes smack right into the sand. So you got to like wait till it dries and brush it off. It was about 100,000 degrees that day. And uh, I ended up with this little key and there was mosquitoes. And my, the, it's gouache, so, so my, uh, my nose was dripping. Sweat the whole time on the board, and uh, people were coming up to me. Oh, you know, they'd never seen the Westerner before, and they were taking pictures around me, and uh, it was pretty awesome. Me surrounded by monks, all uh, every brushstroke was. Uh, or you you paint something wrong, and it will be like oh oh. <laughs> Every bright start. It's really the failures that you learn on, and then the, you know, you get better and better, and uh, the failures become less, and um, and it's just a, it's always great to just keep painting, you know. Uh, I did start traditionally for many many years, for the simple reason that you know a number of years ago we did not have tools like we have now with the Cintiq and all that. But I didn't feel as comfortable as I did before, you know, with the traditional tools. It was like drawing on plastic, so that bothered me. Finally, one day, I, I had a, like a realization, <laughs> like there was this <laughs> celestial music and all that. And I thought, well, instead of drawing on plastic, that sounds really primitive. I took it like it was like ice skating. You know, the old masters who knew how to simplify elegantly. You know, doing a portrait, doing a landscape, there's a lot of complexity there. 
The masterful ones had dead-on draftsmanship, but they knew how to simplify. So someone like John Singer Sargent, Franz Halls, especially Velasquez, those people knew how to take all of that complexity and put it down elegantly and make this simple statement, but with artistry. They're fantastic, and that's what we talk and talk about with my students here. You know, when you're working from life, there's so much complexity that you have to organize. And so how do you find that simple, clear, beautiful statement with artistry? How do you pull that out of all the complexity? That's kind of my focus as a teacher, is teaching the students to see it that way. It's an extraordinary inspiration for me for many, many years. Uh, is the third floor of the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. And it is just simply the most beautiful collection. There are those three rooms, uh, which is where all the Impressionist art is. I could live there, be happy. I wish I could live there.